Hello and welcome. Today, I want to talk about some of the crafting methods I used early in Heist League to make my profits. This is going to be a two-part video series. Part one is going to cover some very basic crafts that don't require a lot of game knowledge and don't require a lot of currency investment. Part two is going to cover some more advanced things. In general, you will need to know more of what you are doing, and there will be more risk. But the profit margins are also significantly higher. For the first craft, the profits are generally measured in chaos. For the second craft, the profits are generally measured in exalts. I'm going to be talking about the methods that I use to determine are these profitable, and I'm going to be talking about how I went about it. So to start with, how did I know some of these things are profitable? Well, the first things that I'm going to talk about are, one, recoloring triad grips. I know this is profitable because a lot of people are playing summoners, and a lot of players are simply too lazy to recolor the triad grips themselves, or they don't know about the Verici trick. If you're curious about the Verici trick, check the video in the card. A lot of people are playing summoners, and a lot of the specters that they're playing need their damage converted over to elemental to take advantage of various things like elemental equilibrium, curses, and exposure. This means there's a big market for that. The second thing I picked was rolling Chaos Res on Stygian Vices using Essence of Envy. Well, a lot of builds still want to use Stygian Vices, they're still a very strong defensive and offensive option, and Chaos Damage is still pretty dangerous. It is especially profitable because Essence of Envy and Essences in general are quite cheap this league. I was paying 1-3 to three Chaos per Essence, depending on the bulk and depending on the tier of Essence. The other nice thing about this is there's a lot of variance in what can be good. You can get things with strength, you can get things with life, you can get things with ES, you can get things with mana recovery. There's lots of options, and since Chaos Res is almost universally needed, it means the things that you roll will sell. And then finally, Chaos Cluster Jewels. And the reason these are profitable is because they are quite easy to roll using Aberrant Fossils. You don't need anything too specific, and between Essence Drain Contagion... Poison Blade Vortex, Toxic Rain and Caustic Arrow, and many other more niche Poison and Chaos Damage builds, there's a lot of things that want to be using them. The bases for these were a little bit more expensive, but if I live searched, I could get them for between 10 and 15 Chaos apiece. Now onto the exact methods I used, starting with the Triad Grips. What I do is I set the Triad Grip to two sockets, I set it to two green, if you want to skip part of this, you can buy two sockets, or possibly if you're lucky even, two green, for one to two chaos orbs. From there, I choose for it to go to three sockets, and if it hits green, cool, I move on to the next step. If it does not hit green, I set it back to two sockets. Then after I hit green, I do the same with four sockets. I'll then link it, which costs five fusing orbs, and I was selling them very quickly for around 50 chaos apiece. It was costing me, I would say, about 20 chaos in chromes and jewelers to roll each one. Something important to note, they were selling so fast that while I was in the middle of rolling gloves for this video, one of the pairs of gloves that I rolled and put up for sale actually sold. That said, as the league goes on, the profit margin may drop. Like with all economy things, you'll have to price check this for yourself. But I would say if about 100 jewelers orbs and about 25 chromes are 10 to 20 chaos less than the price of four green triads, this method is worth doing. If you want to get a little ballsier, take a bigger risk, you can then corrupt them afterwards. If you hit something like Ellie Weakness, that's big money, that's multiple exalts. If you don't hit Ellie Weakness, there's some other useful things, or you could just brick them and lose all your investment. So there's kind of two methods here, you can go with a really simple, really cheap, or you can go with the big risk, big reward. Now moving on to the Stygian Vises. The basic theory here is using Essence of Envy on eye level 86 Stygians. If 86 is too expensive, you can definitely get 84 instead. When I was doing this, they're costing 5 to 8 Chaos Orbs apiece for 86, and 3 to 5 Chaos Orbs apiece for 84. I was spending between 1 and 3 Chaos Orbs for my Essence of Envy. The tier doesn't particularly matter. The goal here is to get Chaos Res and something else sellable. Well, what else is sellable? Look for... High tier life, high tier energy shield, high tier mana, strength, or other elemental resistances. It's actually pretty easy to buy five or six bases, roll them, and just after every single roll, price check the results. Don't be overly specific, don't include what I would call dead mods, like block stun recovery, but if it's got 60 life, the chaos res, and 40 Ellie res, put in 40 Ellie res, 20 or 25 or 30 chaos res, whatever is applicable, and 60 life. 
see what comes up on Stygians. If it's in the 40 to 80 C range, put it up for sale. If it's below 20 C, probably roll over it. If it's in between that range, the 21 to 39 Chaos Orb range, if you have a bunch of bases, put it up anyway, half the time it's sold. And if it doesn't, just re-roll it with your next batch. There are more advanced things you can do to fix a lot of the issues some of these belts might have. You can manipulate affixes, annul, etc. But you really don't need to. It's so cheap. The essences are one chaos each. Then in most cases, it's better to just throw a crafted mod on and call it good. And if it sells, cool. It costs you maybe 10 chaos orbs to make it. You're tripling, quadrupling, multiplying tenfold if you're lucky. And you know what? If it doesn't sell, just roll it with your next batch. Enough will sell that you're going to consistently profit. Then the third method was Chaos Large and Chaos Damage Over Time Medium Clusters, rolling them with Aberrant Fossils. The reason I did this is because there's a lot of different notable combinations that are used by different builds. And I found that there's a lot of combinations that will sell for between 30 and 60 Chaos Orbs. As a result, I didn't have to be very picky. It was really just a matter of roll the jewels with Aberrant Fossils, roll them until I get any combination with two notables, price check them, and if it looks like it's worth at least 30 chaos, put it up for sale. And if it doesn't sell at 30 chaos, re-roll it with my next batch. The cheapest ones that I was selling were 30C, like I mentioned. The most expensive was three exalts. If you hit the right notable combo, either two notables on a medium or three notables on a large, you can get some pretty big jackpots. But the goal isn't to go after those very expensive multiple exalt crafts, the goal is to just make something that doubles your money consistently. Because Aberrant Fossils were very cheap. I was getting them in decent bulk at between 1 and 2 chaos each, which means in total I was spending, I would say on average, 25 chaos. So the worst possible combos that I made would sell for at least 5 chaos profit. That's not particularly worth it, but as a loss recovery, that's not bad. A lot of them were selling for more like 60, which is again, a little over twice my investment. Now, one thing I want to be very clear about is these are prices from my experience focused primarily on week one into early week two of Heist League. The exact prices and the exact items are going to shift based on the meta. They're going to shift based on supply and demand. And they're going to shift potentially as a result of this video. If 20,000 people watch this video and then try to craft these three items that I mentioned, the material cost is going to go up and the price is going to crash. However, there's a lot of other items out there that you can do similar things with. You can roll flasks, for example. You can roll other different cluster jewels. And there's plenty of other bases that are easily profitable and have a lot of mods that show up commonly. The idea is to not roll something that's necessarily expensive, but that consistently doubles your investment and sells pretty quickly. So do your research and experiment this isn't about risky crafts, this is just about consistency. I'd love to hear your crafting success stories from this league. And if you haven't crafted before, are you going to try any of the methods that I've outlined? And if so, after you do, what's your success with it? Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and if you like this video and want to catch the second part on more advanced crafting methods, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you can see whenever I upload. If you want to see more crafting or talk to me about my crafting process, feel free to drop by my Twitch stream, which I do most weekdays. And if you want to support me so that I can keep making videos just like this one, you can do so for as low as $1 a month, either by clicking the join button or the membership link down in the description below. When you join the channel, you will gain access to some perks, and you'll know that you've helped me to continue making videos like this for people like you. Thank you again for watching, I hope you found this helpful, and I wish you the best of luck in all of your crafting endeavors.